Hello, I'm Dr. Deepak Bhatt for ACC.org, and we are here day number four, the final day of ESC. It's been a wonderful meeting, and I'm here with my two good friends, Gabriel Stegg and Paul Coley, and we're going to discuss the trials that we thought were the hottest or the most practice changing, or the ones where the presenters actually sent the slides in ahead of time, so we knew what we were talking about. But at any rate, uh, great stuff, all terrific. Let me start off with the ischemia CKD extend trial. I was the discussing for that trial that Sri Paul Bangalore presented. And the bottom line is it was a five year follow up from the ischemia CKD trial. If you recall, the previous follow up at about two years didn't show any benefit of an invasive versus a conservative strategy in patients with ischemia. And uh, there was just no difference in death or MI at that time point. Now there's been longer term follow up and still there's no difference between the two arms with respect to death or MI. So I thought the bottom line message was quite clear in patients who have chronic kidney disease, advanced chronic kidney disease, GFR less than 30 say, and stable coronary artery disease uh, with ischemia. Well, don't go hunting around for ischemia unless there's a good clinical indication to do so, really bad engine or something. Uh, and in fact, uh, if you do that uh, and then try to revascularize whoever you think needs revascularization, there's no benefit to that strategy. So it's consistent, I think, with the larger story. You know, people have stable coronary artery disease, unless you're trying to relieve symptoms, just leave them alone, even if there is ischemia there. Don't leave them alone with medical therapy and lifestyle management, but just leave them alone in terms of revascularization. So the next trial we're going to discuss is the Fourier and the uh, open label extension of it. And, and Pyle, I can think of no one better to discuss that than you. Uh, thank you, Deepak. So as you recall, the Fourier trial uh, was a trial of stable ASCVD patients treated with evolucumab versus placebo and a, a large trial over 27,000 patients. And what it showed was that there was a decreased risk of MACE, but no effect on cardiovascular mortality. But the follow-up of that parent trial was only 2.2 years. So this was really the open label extension, the longer term follow-up, um, you know, after the trial concluded where patients were allowed to take uh, the PCSK9 inhibitor evolucumab. And, and what the investigators were looking at here were to see how you know, things develop over time. And essentially two different clinical trial phenomena, the lag effect where benefit of an intervention grows over time and the legacy effect where you see whether or not the benefit is preserved during extended follow-up. So this was a, a median follow-up of five years. And what they found in fact, was that there was a 15% relative risk reduction in the five point mace. There was a 20% relative risk reduction in the hard three point mace. And of that, there was a 23% relative risk reduction in cardiovascular death. So that mortality benefit did end up emerging with this median follow-up of five years. And it really does tell us that sometimes, you know, when we only follow trials for a short period of time, and the first things that we see modify are really the MIs and, you know, the plaque and the revascularization. And sometimes it takes many years before that survival benefit declares itself. Yeah, no, great points. And, you know, Gabriel had proven that and published that in Odyssey as well, within the context of the initial randomized phase that uh, there was a reduction in mortality, in particular, more evident uh, in patients that had higher baseline LDL cholesterol within the range uh, uh, that was randomized. So yeah, it's great to see all this data lining up, supporting intense LDL reduction. Well, Gabriel, let me ask you about another, it wasn't actually a trial, but it was a patient-level meta-analysis called PANTHER. I like that acronym, by the way. What did PANTHER show us? So PANTHER was a, an individual patient data meta-analysis of chronic monotherapy with either aspirin or P2A12 inhibitors in patients with chronic stable coronary artery disease. And um, what it told us is that uh, P2A12 monotherapy seems to be significantly superior in preventing cardiovascular events compared to aspirin alone by approximately 12%, with no um, major difference in bleeding. Actually, numerically, there's slightly less bleeding with P2A12 inhibition than with aspirin. And there is less hemorrhagic stroke and less GI bleeding with P2Y12 monotherapy compared to aspirin. Uh, the results appeared quite consistent across the various patient types and subgroups. And so um, from this meta-analysis, it would seem that long-term monotherapy with a P2Y12 inhibitor is probably a very reasonable alternative to monotherapy with aspirin. 
Yeah, no, that's a nice summary. I mean, I, I guess I'm sort of a believer and have been a believer since the Capri trial, when that was shown in an individual trial, I think clopidogrel was superior to aspirin and high-risk secondary prevention. Well, you know, let me turn to each of you, Paul. Let me start with you first, just for what you think the biggest story is not of today. These were three great studies from today, but from the overall meeting. And it's been a terrific meeting. It's hard to just pick one, I know. But Paul, what do you think is the most practice-changing trial you've heard here? You know, I, I would have to say that my top choice is probably secure because what it told me is that it's not just what we're doing, but it's how we're doing it. So it's not just the medications, it's not just writing the prescriptions, but actually the implementation of those medications in the real world that determines outcomes. And so we have to really start thinking harder, not just about medications and pills and prescriptions, but about how we get our patients to improve their compliance with these therapies and you know what we can do to really ease uh, the uptake of these types of interventions. Yeah, no, uh, great thoughts. Uh, Gabriel, which trial would you pick as the most practice changing? It's a difficult choice. There were many studies, but from a public health standpoint, given the prevalence of rheumatic heart disease in low and middle income countries, I have to say, I think Invictus is the one study that will change the lives of most patients compared to all of the other trials that were presented here, reminding us that vitamin K antagonists should remain the standard of care for treating atrial fibrillation in patients with rheumatic heart disease. Yeah, no, that's terrific. I, I, likewise, it's hard to pick one. There were so many trials, so much discussion about different trials, but I, I'm sort of like, oh, I, I would have picked Secure as the one that has the potential to change the, the lives of the most patients worldwide. I think the impact on global health could be really enormous, not just in places like Europe and, and, and the United States, but really all over the world, uh, including Europe and the United States, and uh, a lot of important messages there, but she already nicely summarized that. Well, you know, it's been wonderful uh, recapping the different uh, ESC days uh, trials with the two of you, uh, trials and some other studies as well, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully the two of you have enjoyed it. Hopefully our audience has enjoyed it. Uh, I know for those of you that are stuck at home, uh, I can sometimes be uh, sort of uh, tough keeping up with everything that's going on. So hopefully we've helped do that. And for those of you that are at the trial, but couldn't really attend all the sessions you want to, hopefully it's a good recap for you too. And for people that want more in terms of trial coverage or journal scans and coverage of different presentations that weren't trials, please tune into acc.org. We have a lot of good coverage there trial summaries, slide sets, journal scans, news stories, uh, just lots of good stuff that hopefully gives you a flavor of the excitement at this really wonderful meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you.